Hello guys, we're back again at Blockchain Festival in Vietnam, hosted by Huobi. And today, we're very honored to have Chai Kit, the founder of Trace2. How are you, Chai Kit? Hi, hi. Hi, Chris. I'm good. All right. Could you give us a bit of an introduction? What is Trace2? All right. Trace2 is basically a decentralized KYC utility platform that we're trying to build. So uh, the problem that we face uh, or we see a lot of the cryptocurrency projects around the world uh, has been facing is around uh, is on the aspect of KYC, AML and uh, counter-terrorism financing as well. So they don't really have uh, a lot of uh, knowledge or uh, ways to deal with this problem which they need to uh, to manage so what we do is that we want to be able to create a decentralized utility platform so that these projects uh, whether is it like a wallet exchange uh, or ICO projects can actually tap into this ecosystem and uh, do a few things number one do not need to actually redo KYC over and over again uh, as, uh, from a user perspective uh, secondly for the uh, wallets exchange and the platforms they will be assured that this uh, utility platform is able to uh, help them get to the regulatory standard that they need to get to uh, just like a financial services uh, company or a bank. I understand. And uh, I'd like to know what is the utility and function uh, behind the Trace2 token? Okay, there are, there are two parts to this. The first part is actually uh, we are B2B uh, in terms of our model, uh, business to business. So what it means is that uh, the corporate users like your exchange, your wallets and your uh, ICOs, when they utilize the KYC services, uh, the, 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 the Trace2 token will be the utility uh, token to be used for payment of services. That's number one. And number two, we are introducing a very revolutionary concept called the uh, community verification process, whereby we want to decentralize human capital by utilizing the community uh, Trace2 ecosystem community to perform social verification tasks for, uh, for the community. So what that means is that when uh, the community is actually doing some work for the ecosystem, uh, they're doing two things. They will stick uh, uh, using T2T tokens, and when they perform the task properly, they will be paid in T2T tokens as well. I understand. And uh, you mentioned regulation and KYC. And uh, we'd like to see some of your insight that we see in 2017, there's a lot of changes and a lot of uh, different regulation that goes into crypto. Uh, what do you see is the roadmap look like in 2018 for you? Yeah, sure. I, I think, um, as you rightly pointed out, Chris, um, 2017 has been the year of the, the blockchain and you know the evolutions and all that. But it has been also said that 2018 itself is the year of regulation in a lot of uh, uh, areas. So, and I, and I agree. Because um, in terms of uh, AML KYC uh, domain, which is where we're expertise in, so we see that that is something that um, uh, a lot of countries in the world will actually have a, a bit of a leveling up to play. Uh, not because they want to um, they want to be better or they want to be tighter or stricter than the others. It's fundamentally because there is this international uh, body called Financial Action Task Force, uh, FATF in short. They are like the supreme body that sets. Uh, AML KYC standards for the whole world. So that body have already set out some guidances on cryptocurrency, virtual currencies uh, two, about two, three years ago and they are coming out with more guidances. So what we're trying to do in, uh, in Trace2 is actually to make sure that the ecosystem is able to future-proof um, and uh, what I, I term it as regulatory inclusion. I'm promoting regulatory inclusion via Trace2 with a view that if we can promote the ecosystem or the participants within the ecosystem like the ICOs, the projects, the exchanges, the wallets can actually level up their regulatory standard. Um, even before the regulation comes in, then they are able to be future-proof for anything that comes in the future because most of the regulatory requirements in the AML KYC space will be based upon um, the, the current regulatory standards of the, the banking sector or the financial services sector. That's, that's like the, the, the current standard at the moment. So. In, in, uh, in respect of how this uh, ecosystem is going to uh, progress, I see that it's just going to be leveling up across the world and there's going to be some kind of a standardization uh, across major uh, um, countries that, that uh, um, a, a lot of these projects are gravitating towards too. I understand. Yep. I understand. Thank you very much. It's a really good answer. And lastly, uh, what do you think about this event? Do you like it? I think this event is great um, and I, I hear that uh, this event um, was being put together in a very short span of time. Uh, so with this great turnout, with this uh, very, very well organized gathering of two days, uh, and we see a lot of clients, and we see a lot of 
great people here. I think it's fantastic. All right. A, a lot better than uh, many other events that I've actually been to. Honestly. All right. Got it. Thank you so much for your time, Jacob. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.